Jupiter Mission Control here is the nerve center of the space base, the brain, if you will, of launch operations, the workstations you see there staffed by three teams in charge of the launcher, the satellites, and the base facilities. The room's divided into two parts. You can see the operational people on one side of the fishbowl in the glass wall and the VIPs and the guests on this side. The viewing room seats 250. Gives you a good idea of what's going on now closer to the pad, a final count, and as you can see, complex and ongoing series of maneuvers to ready everything, the launcher and the base and the downrange tracking stations for the mission. You can't just call out 321 liftoff and push a button. I think in the old days they used to be able to do that, but uh, there are a lot of issues involved today, including safety. You're going to hear the DDO, Amy Sip, our first, first female DDO, by the way. She's going to call out the one minute mark in just a moment, and we'll be into the final 60 à seconds. Tous DDO, yeah. attention pour moins une minute. Top, H0, moins une minute. Final 60 seconds. Enrico, we're going to say goodbye momentarily to you. Yes. Enrico's going to go outside to watch the launch from the balcony. We'll, yes. see, you, we'll see you in about uh, two or three minutes. Huh? Yes, it's a special moment for me. All right. See tell you us all after. about it when you come back. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be exciting. There, there are two terraces where the guests and VIPs can watch the liftoff here. As we mentioned, the action takes place about 14 kilometers from here. You get a great view as Arian as a Lega, I should say, passes. When he comes back, we'll get an Enrico's reaction to seeing the liftoff live. You're watching the second Vega flight from Europe's spaceport, Proba V, Vinridsat 1, and Est Cube 1. A tous de DDO, attention pour le décompte final. Final countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Deux, un, top. Allumage, décollage. La trajectoire est normale. Well, Vega lifting off perfectly from French Guiana, and right up she went rapidly in the light rain. Don't know what kind of visibility Enrico had out there. It looked like we lost Vega to the clouds pretty quickly. But she's beginning her second mission a little over a year after her successful first flight. The DDO is calling out all is fine, all is normal on board. 137 tons at liftoff. Ariane 5, you might recall, weighs over six times that much. Those of you who are familiar with the Ariane flights know the heavier launcher rises much more slowly than Vega. You saw Vega rise like an arrow, surprisingly quickly if you're used to watching Ariane lift off. Anyway, we were supposed to go, by the way, last Friday. We were technically ready, but we're held up by high altitude winds. But as you can see, we lifted off successfully La trajectoire est tonight. All is normal on board. Basically, what's ahead, Vega's first three stages rise very rapidly in about six minutes. We're into the first stage burn. The first stage will burn another 20 seconds, flame out at about a minute 55. The second stage will then ignite and separate at plus three minutes and 39 seconds. The third stage will ignite at three minutes and 55 seconds and separate at plus 6 minutes 18 seconds and the avum the upper stage will take over then we've just had separation of the first stage you heard the ddo call out we have first stage weighing 97 tons 88 tons of that fuel Allumage all of that used up we're into the second stage burn and before we talk about the second stage burn welcome back enrico how was it out there A lot of clouds, raining clouds. You didn't see much, did no, you? No, not very much. But it was magnifico, you know, because at the beginning you see a little spotlight on the launch pad. There is no sound. And uh, it disappeared, the light disappeared. But then after you, there is a loud noise that arrived, the music of the propulsion that rolls you from the sky. And it makes you vib little vibration on your skin, you know. But Goose not bumps, little then. vibration because it's a noise so high that it could seem 
uh, uh, an earthquake, you know, that it's so loud. loud. Yes, yeah. that loud. It's so you're impressed. Yeah. Now uh, you've seen. This is not the first time you've seen a launch. It's the first Vega, anyway. It's uh, my. Uh, I I've seen four uh, Ariane five before, which they are noisier. But uh, the for the little Vega, it's uh, quite a. Uh, Impressive. Super. So even with uh, the loss of visibility early on, you still had a lot of noise. You still had ah, an impressive yes. sight. Yes, and this noise—it's a mark of the power of the propulsion. You know, it's uh, and even if you don't see it, you can feel it. Good. Okay. Well, if that doesn't make you uh, want to come down and watch a launch, folks, I don't know what will. Enrico, back to work. Sorry to put you to work. On the upper left-hand side of the screen, you have the cursor crawling up a line and below that you have two lines A and V. Can you explain to us what those are? Yes, yes. The curve is a theoretical path that the launcher has to follow to accomplish its optimized mission. And uh, the little uh, A means uh, um, the, that V is the uh, attitude of the launcher. Below it you can see a V and it's the abbreviation of velocity and speed. But on the curve that you can see a little bit a little dot that is moving and that dot is a current real-time position of Vega given by the data coming from the launchers. All right, altitude 210 kilometers, speed 4 kilometers per second. We're going to, our top speed will be about 7.5 yeah. kilometers, so watch for that. While you were giving us that rundown, we had the separation of the fairing, you saw that, revealing to the elements Proba V, which yeah. will be separated a little later on. Mm -hmm. Yes, the the the, the fairing is uh, is remo is uh, jetting signing because outside the Earth atmosphere the fairing it doesn't uh, need it anymore and so we lightened the launcher of about 550 kilograms. We're in the third stage burn. The Z Nuf is to call it the Z9, the four meter long Z9, the Vega's smallest solid propellant motor, has the longest burn time. She'll burn about two minutes, weighs 12 tons again. 12, ten, 10 of those 12 tons are fuel. So a lot of the weight of the vehicle, like for Ariane, is propellant. Yep. Coming up on separation of the third stage, we have another minute to burn. The Going back to the fairing, going back to the fairing, industrial team is a big one, Italian, Spanish, German, Belgian, French, Swiss, Ukrainian, and Swedish firms all participate in design and development of the fairing. Yeah. And the fairing on ground maintains a clean room environment for the precise instrument of the payload and uh, probably has, has a very sensitive um, optical instrument. And we, we can release it now, as you said, because we're out of the Earth's atmosphere and it's designed to protect the satellite from movements and thermal... Uh, they protect the, against the impact of the dense atmosphere. And of course we're out of the atmosphere now, so we don't, uh, we don't need it. We're coming up on extinction of the third stage, and then we'll have ignition, first ignition of the app. There's extinction. You can see it shutting off. The nozzle, you hear the DDO call out the confirmation. You see our speed, and there's a separation of the third stage. Sometimes there's a second or two delay between the time the thing happens, the event happens up there, and the telemetry comes back here into Jupiter, which is why uh, we get the animation a little bit first. But you see, we're doing well. The fourth stage has started its first burn. Its fourth stage is called the AVUM, A-V-U-M. Yes, for Attitude and Verni Upper Mobile. Verni referring to the thrusters that are used for fine adjustment to the attitude or velocity of a spacecraft. This is different from the lower stages, which use solid propellant. Yes, exactly. This fourth stage is um, a liquid propellant engine, and it can be uh, shut down and restart. Basically, is it fair to say that solid propulsion, like on the first uh, three stages, is used for raw power to get us going, and is it fair to say that the liquid propulsion is the more sophisticated use for precision. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Because of because the Avum is designed to deliver payloads into different orbits and to perform very fine satellites pointing before separating them. We've been picked up by a downrange tracking station in Bermuda. Vega will pass over it twice. On his first pass, it'll see extinction of the first Avum burn. Vega's trajectory has been designed to be followed from the ground at all times. The radar is sending the launcher, I should say, is sending back radar and telemetry. 
yeah. to these downrange stations. Now, what's telemetry? Yes, uh, telemetry is a way we have to stay in touch with the launcher. The downrange telemetry stations receive electromagnetic waves that bring information, thousands of parameters and indicators of Vega Health in flight, motor pressure, stage separation event, nozzle activation, and so on. We analyze some of this data in real time, so we know where the satellites have been released, for example. The other data are examined after the flight to find how the vehicle performed. We have downrange telemetry stations in most of the places of the flight Bernard by the launcher. Bermuda, Perth, Saskatoon, Lucknow, added to those in French Guiana. Our altitude, 274 kilometers. Our speed, 7.74 kilometers per second. We're going to go shortly to a replay of a liftoff, a medley, I think, of launch replay shots from different places, Le est calme. you'll be able to see uh, for yourself once again those good, good, uh, very interesting pictures that took place about eight minutes ago. We're following the second mega mission. Here's the replay. What uh, that made you uh, recall the moments that you spent out on the balcony? What went through through your mind as you saw those shots? Uh, it recalls my previous job in CNES. I participated to the design of the ground segment of Vega with the people of Ezrin and Industrial as Vitru Chizet. It was quite hard to answer to all the requirements of Vega, but now it becomes real. The real thing. Avum carrying 626 kilos of propellant in her four tanks powered by a restartable engine, as we mentioned, and we're going to have five burns on this flight. What do we need five burns for? Uh, yes, yeah, so um, the two first burns are necessary to target the 820 kilometers of the circular orbit of Proba V. You know, the following two are for the benefit of the orbit at 670 kilometers of Venerezat and S-Cube. Then after, we have the fifth and last one, which is necessary to deorbit the Avum, following a safe and predeterminate trajectory over the Pacific Ocean. The space debris mitigation is one of the very important innovations of this launch. I think on the first uh, Vega launch, uh, lasted just over an hour. Tonight's will be over two hours. And the Avum, at that time, uh, we had three burns, and so yes. we have five. Correct, yes. Uh, there are other differences, which we'll get to in a moment. But for the, for, for the moment, we are in the middle of the first Avum burn, which will burn again for about another 30 seconds. Then uh, we'll have a ballistics <laughs> phase, <laughs> coasting phase, which will last about three quarters of an hour. Then the Avum will reignite for the second burn. It lasts about a minute and a half. They're short burns and they're long burns. Yeah. Shortly after that, Prova V will be separated at about plus 55 minutes and 26 seconds. Then there'll be a third avum burn, and a fourth avum firing will prepare the separation of Vinredsat and S-Cube. If you're looking ahead, Vinredsat separating at 1 minute and 57 minutes after launch, and S-Cube 1 released about 3 minutes after that. Coming up on the end of the first avum burn, should hear the DDO. There we go. She's called yeah. out the first flame out extinction of the upper stage. And you see our speed on the lower left is 7.96 kilometers per second. I think that's going to be about our top speed because we're going to be changing speed. speed now. Exactly. Let's go back down to Earth for a moment. Enrico, talk about the launch pad. If you don't mind, Vega's pad was built on the old Ariane 1 pad called yep. ELA-1, which was yeah. decommissioned in 1989, but its history goes back even farther. Yeah, even before Ariane, the initial launch pad, that initial, that launch pad was built for the three stages launcher Europa in the beginning of the 70s. Europa was the first European collaboration in a launcher sector and the precursor of the current Ariane launchers family. That adventure gave birth to ESA. More of the mission in a moment, but for now, as promised, the second part of the latest news from Ariane Space, including a lot of contracts. Take a look. On February 7th, Ariane Space launched successfully for the 54th straight time, lifting into orbit two new telecom satellites, Amazonas 3 for Spain and Azar Space Africa Sat 1A, the first satellite for Azerbaijan. The mission set a record for mass delivered on geostationary transfer orbit, 9.5 tons. 
Utensat and Ariane Space announced a net zero revenue contract for launch of several satellites on February 8. The agreement guarantees Utelsat new resources and flexibility in order to carry out a program to expand and grow its satellite fleet. In Sydney on March 4th, 